Hello and welcome to Provis Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved. We've been doing a lot of uh, custom scenarios lately. You may have noticed uh, a couple episodes ago we did the Rise... Oh, no, sorry, not the Rise of the Cat Girls. The Fangirl Epidemic, which was a Nurex Worm style of disease. It was actually very similar, just had some reworded descriptions, but it was pretty fun. And of course, the last episode we did the Nurex Worm Aftermath, which uh, seemed quite situationally appropriate, but it did play, again, fairly similarly to the Nurex Worm. And that got me thinking, you know, I have not done the Mega Brutal version of the Nurex Worm on this channel yet. It was the first Mega Brutal that I got um, in my own Plague Inc. career using a strategy that I used in my Brutal video that I released probably a year or somewhat ago. But I haven't done it on this channel yet, and I figure, okay, well, since we're just gonna, we've already done two custom scenarios of the Nurex Worm, you might as well continue the trend, and then I'll just show you guys how it's done on Mega Brutal. So as far as a genetic code, we got a couple of options that we'll use. Um, I think we're going to go for Metabolic Jump, because I have a particular strategy in mind, and we will have a bit of severity to take extra value out of these red bubbles. Genetic Mimic is pretty good, I think. Um, arguably, you could go with Darwinist if you're feeling lucky, but I'm thinking probably Genetic Mimic makes the most sense. We're actually going to go for... Mm, do I want Aquasite, or do I want Aerosite? I'm going to go for Aquasite. I think that will work just fine. And Extremophile, of course. Why would you do anything else? Now, interestingly, instead of Symptostasis, I'm going to be switching it up a little bit, and we're going to go for Transstasis, because the strategy that I will be using is going to focus very heavily on transmission in the early game, but well, you'll see. You'll see how it's going to work. Either way, now, of course, this does mean that things are going to be easier to cure, but that's one of the reasons I'm picking up Genetic Mimic in order to try and counteract that. All right, we'll be playing on Mega Brutal, of course. Why not? Now, as far as a name, well, if it hasn't frozen, did you freeze? No, oh, there we go. Okay, as far as a name, we need something that people say is controlling our actions. Illuminati? Nah, that's too easy. Something that people think controls our thoughts, tells us what to think, how to feel, uh, tells us... Oh, wait, nope, nope, I know, I know. There, the liberal media. Can't imagine anyone's gonna get ins insulted by that at all. Yeah, no, totally not. Okay. Selecting a starting location. Now, the strategy that I will be employing is going to revolve around uh, getting a foothold in as many countries, especially the rich countries, as early as possible. But we're not trying to inspect too quickly or we're going to get discovered. And I'm thinking I'm going to start in the United Kingdom for this. Good proximity to Europe. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to the United States and several of the other wealthy, developed countries as soon as possible. Now, as far as the overall strategy, you'll kind of see this take uh, shape as we play. For now, let's go ahead and take a look at our transmission symptoms and abilities. We start off with Concertina Locomotion, ability to grip with the portions of the body while pulling slash pushing other sections, allows for faster movement outside of the host. Basically, you're just kind of wiggling around like a little worm. Now, this increases our infectivity a fair amount for only two points, but it does also increase our severity. Now, that's not a bad thing for us quite yet. There will be a bit of a race against the clock, and getting detected early can suck, but in the early game at least, getting a little extra infectivity will not hurt too much, so we'll pick that up. That of course will lead to uh, undulatory locomotion, which is very similar. Again, two DNA points because we have that uh, trans stasis, but a lot of infectivity for only two points. That's pretty good. We also have eggs. The Nurex Worm produces eggs that are ejected from the host brain in the thousands, increasing infectiousness pretty decent. And then we have Genetic Swap. Now this, we might pick up simply because it's going to be so cheap, but this will lead to some pretty nice options for us later on, so we'll see how we feel about it. This basically just a mutation chance, nothing too special beyond that, but it does lead to some interesting options. As far as symptoms, we only have one option at the start of the game, and that is Neural Breach. Breach the blood-brain barrier to allow access to the host brain. Causes dystonia, rapid eye blinking. Only costs one point to get us started, um, and we will pick that up, but first we're going to focus mostly on transmission. Of course, the big thing about symptoms is there are a lot of them with the Nurex Worm, and there are several different ways you can win the game. Well, a couple of ways. Primarily, just kill everybody through standard symptoms. You know, just make everyone miserable, make their bodies fail, and make them die. Or, control their minds and make them all commit suicide. Or, uh, reach transcendence, control their minds so that they start worshipping you as some sort of god, and they just stop fighting you for the cure, right? That is how the Norex Worm. We're going to be going for a Transcendence victory, most likely. We'll see how uh, how things play out, but... 
Yeah, there's a lot of symptoms, so the earlier we pick them up before a lot of people get infected, the better. And that's one of the reasons we started in a wealthy country that's close to a lot of other wealthy countries is because I'm trying to get into as many countries as possible without getting a lot of people infected because that genetic drift does add up, and we do not have symptostasis. As far as abilities, we have our standard cold, heat, and drug resistance. We also have the Trojan Plains. Manipulation of dopamine transporters results in a form of ADHD, which encourages hosts to fly to a target country. If you don't know what these are, then hopefully by now you've watched my Necrovirus and Simeon Flu playthroughs, and you know that both of those disease types have a special ability where you can spend DNA to send either zombies or apes to a target country and infect them, right? Trojan Plains is... Uh, similar, but at the same time, a bit different. Trojan planes, once you picked it up, you will have a random chance to get a pop-up and uh, send a plane to a target country and infect it. It's random when it comes up. You can't spend points to um, to do it, so you have no. it's pretty much luck-based, but at the same time, it's free. So once you've made this initial investment in Trojan planes, you will have random, free chances to infect a new country, even islands that have closed down their ports. Pretty useful in a jam. We'll probably make use of that at some point. All right, so let's go ahead and bump up to speed three. Start generating some of those points. The Nurax Worm does emerge. The liberal media is a Nurax Worm undiscovered for thousands of years. It should have stayed that way, you fools. All right, now as far as some transmissions, we can already get undulatory locomotion for only two points. Skin that transtasis is going to make sure that we get a lot of transmission very early on, which is quite nice for us. There's an orange bubble. Now had we gotten cytochromic boost, that would allow us to pick some of those up, but we did not. All right, now we have an option. Now that we've gotten undulatory locomotion, we can get either air one or water one. They work exactly the way you would expect. We're probably going to get water one, uh, at least to start off, because that will give us the opportunity to spread a little bit faster in the UK, get some more DNA generated. So we'll do that. It'll also end up leading to a nice combo with eggs once I pick all of these up. Afterwards, we will probably focus, excuse me, on getting air... Uh, <clears throat> air 1, Air 2, and a special ability that comes out of that. We need 13 points in order to get Water 2. We are spreading very slowly right now, but that's fine. We're still generating a reasonable amount of DNA. There's Water 2. Now we'll spread a little bit faster. London Olympics Mystery. Organizers promise it will happen soon, but no reason has been given for a change of schedule in the Olympics. In 2016. When the early access began for this game, I'm pretty sure the London Olympics were on the horizon, which was a good few years ago. I'm pretty sure, but I remember watching those. Those were fun. I liked them. Yeah, they were fun. All right, we're going to grab eggs one and eggs two. That will increase our infectivity a fair bit, and that will lead to water level three. The worm eggs gain the ability to thrive in unsanitized water. Nine points, lots of infection, especially good in poor countries. Now, we're not too worried about that right now. So actually, you know what, instead of getting Water 3, I, I mean, while I would be able to spread a lot faster in humid UK, I think I will go ahead and grab Air so that I can possibly spread by plane. That, of course, leads to Air 2, where we get a lot of infectivity for only 11 points, which I'm a big fan of. But it'll also lead to Air 3, which I believe, we'll, we'll double check this, but I believe does increase your infectivity in rich countries and urban countries, which will be quite nice for us because that fits our bill very nicely. I do want to get into the U uh, Europe as quickly as possible. Let's see, 11 points is what we needed, yes, okay. We're getting quite a few orange bubbles, and this is where Cytochromic Boost could be kind of useful. If you're planning on dragging out the game a long time, like we are because we started in a wealthy country, then uh, you'll probably get a lot more orange bubbles, and you might get a good amount of use out of that, but not sure it's going to matter for our purposes. So yeah, Air 3 does increase your infectivity in rich and hot countries in particular. Uh, we'll probably save up for that. It's going to be 18 points. We are spreading to the United States and Australia. That's pretty good. We do have a fair bit of infect uh, severity because of the sheer number of in uh, transmissions we have gotten at this point. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of extra DNA out of some of these red bubbles. I am surprised we haven't spread by any boats yet. It's a little disappointing, and that might penalize our score a teeny bit just because it's taking a long time. 18 is the magic number. There we go. Let's grab Air 3. We'll spread a bit faster in rich and hot countries. Hopefully, we'll spread throughout Europe a wee bit faster. We did get into Egypt, and we are in South Africa. If we can get to Saudi Arabia, that will open up a lot of plane options for us. And you know what? Let's go ahead and grab Water 3. And that's all the transmission we're going to need for at least a little while. So, why don't we go ahead and focus on some symptoms? We're going to grab Neural Breach for one point. 
That'll lead to Cerebral Tendrils for three points, enables increased control over the host's brain. Now, we're picking these up as quickly as we can before a lot of people get infected and increase the cost of all of these symptoms because of the genetic drift. We're going to pick up Adrenergic Constriction, beta receptor blockers released, dampening the anxiety in the host and lessening the severity of allergic reactions to the worm. Basically, spend points in order to reduce severity, which again reduces how likely you are to get detected. We also have Axiolytic Infusion. That'll be about seven points, maybe more by the time we get it. The important thing is we haven't gotten, well, we just got into India. We haven't gotten uh, very populous or very uh, infective in very high population countries yet. Only about seven and a half million infected. So these symptoms are still relatively cheap. This is going to lead to psychosis, which again, spend points to do effectively the exact same thing. We did get detected. I was about to say we haven't been yet, but there we are. They have detected us, but they haven't started working on the cure yet. Hopefully they won't. Psychosis might be able to slow them down a tiny bit. We definitely want to rush up to Transcendence as quickly as we can before we infect too many people and everything gets really freaking expensive. It's going to take 18 points. Now that will increase our severity a lot by grabbing Adoration. But we will get a fair amount of infectivity. And frankly, because we've been detected, yes, it means they'll work on the cure a little bit faster. But picking up some more severity pretty much means that we will get more DNA from those red bubbles. So I'm okay with that. That's gonna to lead to devotion, which is effectively the same thing, a little less infectivity, but a lot of severity. And that will lead directly to transcendence, which is very, very, very expensive. The UK did just shut down their airports. Not a huge fan of that, but okay. Now we haven't picked up any abilities yet, you may have noticed, and that's fine because we are trying to just get as many symptoms out as po uh, soon as possible. We could have played it slow, we could have gone under the radar for as long as possible, and um, tried to avoid the cure and so on, just kind of sat at psychosis with very little severity and kind of stocked up points, but that's not going to get us the best score in this game, so we're hoping not to. Liberal Media Awareness Day. Now I find that hilarious, personally. I don't know about the rest of you. We did get into Greenland, that's pretty fun. Transcendence is currently going to cost us 44 points, which is a lot. Now why are we rushing toward our victory condition right now, especially when we're having so much trouble getting all the DNA we need and they're working on the cure? Because Transcendence effectively works as if you had killed everybody. So basically, once you have Transcendence, as long as you've infected most of the world, most of the world will not work on the cure. We still only need 44 points, that's pretty good. Liberal media is just another parasite. <laughs> Again, I find this surprisingly funny. Okay, 53 points, that should be enough. That should buy us a fair bit of time. Good. Now, as far as some abilities, let's go ahead and grab Trojan Planes level 1, uh, just to give us the opportunity of sending some of the planes out to any islands we might have missed. And then we'll worry about picking up things like heat resistance. We do have a plane available to us, so we are missing... Uh, New Guinea and Philippines, and it looks like we have all of the other islands, which is rather fortunate for us. Good, okay, and they haven't closed down their ports, which is just fine. So, we'll go ahead and send one to the Philippines, I suppose. We have 19 points to spend. Let's grab drug resistance so we can go a little bit faster in the USA and Canada, which are a couple of major contributors to the cure research. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab actually level 2 right now, because the countries that have the most cure potential are probably not the hot ones, so heat resistance isn't as critical as it might have been otherwise. Now we'll pick it up, cure resistance, and let's go ahead and grab Trojan Planes level 2. Now this is going to open up a few different options for you. We see Trojan Destroyers, testosterone secretion in Trojan hosts, causes destructive and aggressive behavior. I don't really see a lot of point to this. Um, this, I think, will eventually end up leading to some sort of lethality, but meh, I don't really see a point. Trojan Planes 3 is basically the same as the previous ones, just increases your odds. And then we have Trojan Roamers, which is interesting, because wherever you send a plane, you, instead of just sending, like, one infected person, you end up seeing several thousand get infected right away. So, it's pretty helpful knowing that a country gets infected by kind of an exponential curve. The more people are infected, the more they, in turn, will infect, and so on. This helps to knock off some of that early portion of the exponential curve. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be sent... Oh, infected worship the liberal media. Oh, that sounds right. Um, it doesn't matter. You don't have to send it to an, uh, a non-infected country. You can send it to a country that is infected, but it's being really stubborn and resisting your efforts. For example, Canada has uh, a lot more people that... Well, Sweden actually would be a better target. Okay, Sweden has about 7,000 people that will be infected by the time a plane arrives. We're going to see it jump up by about 10, 15,000 there. Okay, that's pretty decent. Well, actually, I take that back. It wasn't quite that much. That was just normal. 
We're still waiting on Trojan Roamers. Okay, never mind. Uh, what else do we want? Let's go ahead and grab Confusion, because that will reduce cure progress for at least a little bit. We'll grab some, we don't actually I don't know how many more of these um, symptoms we're going to be able to grab at this point, because they are working on that cure pretty aggressively. Not sure we're going to be able to, but we'll try. Let's pick up Memory Loss, and that's probably the last symptom we can afford before this genetic drift becomes ridiculously expensive. What are we missing here? We are still missing New Guinea. So let's go ahead and send a Trojan plane over there. That'll solve that problem right quick. Now, as far as some more abilities, um, more heat resistance would probably be good if we can. So we'll do exactly that. There we go. Heat resistance for me. Thank you. Now, one option for us at this point would be to gain some level of lethality. I'm not sure how much we're going to need that. Are we doing okay in the urban regions? It seems to me that the urban regions are completely covered so we don't need rodents but insects are cheap and will help us spread throughout places like Africa a bit faster it's almost like picking up a form of heat resistance but you know not quite who else are we missing Morocco West Africa and Algeria all right let's go to Morocco because we know that they like to cause issues for us let's grab insects level two and we'll save up some points for perhaps a genetic reshuffle at this point I feel like we're gonna win the question now becomes can we get ourselves a little bit of extra score at the end and I like to think maybe so that's going to reduce the cure progress a bit, down to 61. We are only missing Algeria now. If we get another Trojan plane, we know where to send that. But notice that the cure progress has slowed down a lot. Most of it is destroyed, despite the fact that we have killed very few people. And that is because Transcendence is doing its job. As far as genetic reshuffle, that would cost a whopping 46 points, which is a lot, obviously. But we'll go ahead and do it, just to buy ourselves, again, a bit more score. Knock it down to 55%. And of course, the more people we have infected, the more cure research progress we are going to be destroying. So pretty much, it should only be Africa that is going to cause us a lot of grief, which I think is a fine trade. Now, of course, because we're not killing people, symptoms are staying very expensive, but, eh, you know, I think it's going to be fine. I'm hoping to get three or four stars out of this, if we're lucky five, but I don't think so. There are no people, healthy people left in the world, so this took us uh, about a year and a half, I think, to win. The world has been destroyed by liberal media. Yep, the liberal media enslaves humanity. Oh, again, I just find this kind of funny. Victory, bam, bam, bam. We got three stars. Okay, so not quite as good as I might have wanted. That was a bit of an experiment on my part to see if starting off in a rich country like the UK would be better. I'm going to go ahead and say probably not. I think you can employ a v basically the exact same strategy, but if you start in Egypt or Saudi Arabia, you probably would be a bit better off. Also, I think I made a mistake in the sense that I went for Water 3 or Air 3 a little bit early. Maybe it would have been better to spend all those points on some of the early symptoms before the uh, genetic drift kicked in. If I were going to be trying to, you know, improve this a little bit, if I were trying to uh, optimize my methods, that would be one thing I would try changing. I know with a similar strategy to this, you can probably get four or five stars. Uh, I've done it before. This was just a bad example. I wanted to kind of try something new. I thought it would work out. It didn't. Oh well, you live and you learn, you try things. The important thing is we have a pretty easy strategy to win the game on Mega Brutal. So yeah, if you're following this along as a guide, uh, go ahead and start off in like Saudi Arabia instead. It's probably fine. And don't invest in Air 3 or Water 3 too early on. Instead, worry about getting yourself um, some symptoms before the genetic drift kicks in. But that would be my recommendation. All right, well, that is it. That uh, pretty much wraps up the Mega Brutal campaign. I technically have one more to do. I think it was the virus, but I'm not sure how much people care about that. If you do, let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, in the future, I will be resuming these custom scenarios. So I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future content. My name has been Provis, and I will see you guys next time.